morning, everyone. I'm Verna from stampinnotes.com and today is my June um, card class free workshop and I'm featuring the Simply Succulent stamp set, cards made with that stamp set and the dies that go with it. So this is a stamp set, Simply Succulents and they're like all the rage now in the greenhouses I've been to, um, all of a sudden there's a lot of succulents and you never used to see them. And they're, they are nice because they are easy to grow, but these are really easy because they're not real. <laughs> but um, anyway, so we have this beautiful stamp set and we have the dies that go with it. This one is fabulous. And here is a card that I did with that die. I don't know if you can, let me hold it over here. You can see it better. Isn't that beautiful? And also there are, there's more dies in the set. Um, there's some beautiful tags. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. This one, there's three tags. And then there's some also little plants um dies hi rosalie so glad you stopped in this morning um so the the die set is really beautiful also um and so i've made mm, six cards here we're not going to do all six but i'm going to show you some of them and i'm going to put my phone down now and adjust my laptop so I can see comments. So I'm gonna put that down and turn it around. Sorry, I hope you don't get dizzy or car sick from that. I'm gonna make my screen bigger on my laptop so I can see what's going on here. That is really beautiful also. Mute that. Thank you, Rosalie. Um, okay, so these are the different cards. Um, today, um, well, I'll get back to that. This one I really love because it's using the new vellum glimmer paper. I don't know if you can see the glimmer on that. Um, and then you open it and it's like that. That one we are gonna do in the workshop today. This one I love, it's just using um, the die cuts. It looks like the aloe plant. And I've used some of that uh, vellum glimmer paper for that one. This one I already showed you. It's um, just so simple to do with the die and the paper. Hardly any stamping. This one is different, it has a die, the die in the background, and I've used the die to sponge through it to do um, the coloring on that um, top piece. This one is a little wreath card, and I love this. Easy to do. Um, I'll show you how to do that, the sponging and the masking. And then this card, and this is just stamps, inks, and paper. So we're gonna start with this card today. And also, I'm gonna slide this paper down so you can see it. This is the host code. Um, if you place a $40 order in my online store, I will send you a PDF for tutorial for all of these cards. Um, and the, the host code is K3XC97S7, and you would use that at checkout. Then um, I will send you that PDF tutorial for PDF tutorial for all of these cards. Also, if you comment today um, and share, you will be put into a drawing for this Berry Blessing stamp set. It just retired. It's so pretty, and this is berry season. And this is brand new. I never used it, and it's a really nice set to have. Um, if you comment and share, and if you just comment, I will put you in a drawing for some a packet of sequins. So let's get started. So we're going to start with this card right here. Oh, where is it? 
the bottom of the pile. So I want to show you how to use the blending brushes to create this. Um, I didn't do any, other than the main image, I didn't do any stamping with um, a stamp, just use the blending brushes. So first thing we're gonna do is this top piece here, our artistic piece with all the color on it. And I've got a piece of cardstock that's five and a quarter by four. I'm gonna see which one it is. It's this one here. My card base is Smoky Slate, and it is eight and a half by five and a half. And what I'm gonna do is bring in my stamp. We're gonna stamp the main blooms first, and that's this large stamp here. And I think I will center it about there. I gotta grab my large block, I forgot it. I always think I'm prepared and then there's always something that I forgot. And I'm gonna use Memento Black ink and ink this up. And because it's so large, I am just gonna stamp on, right on the stamp um, like this while I turn my ink pad upside down. Give that a good inking. Okay, and I'm gonna bring in my, I'm gonna stamp on this. Use this covered pad to stamp on. Okay. So we'll put this, oh, about right here. This would be a good time to use a Stamparatus, <laughs> which I did not get out. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp that um, flower pot underneath. And I've made a mask to cover this, and all I did was stamp um, on copy paper and just cut out the edges. And I wanna lay this over here, over this like this, so that when I stamp my pot, um, I'm not stamping on the flowers that are already there. It will look much better. So I'm grabbing my Memento ink again. I'm gonna ink up the pot. And I want the pot right about here. Okay, so when we lift this off, it looks natural um, instead of having the pot edge go across the top there. So that's, that's a good way to do that. And that is called masking. So now I'm gonna bring in my Smoky Slate um, Stampin' Blends, and when you're using Stampin' Blends, you want to be mindful that they they do bleed through on the other side, so if you have anything good on the other side, you want to be careful about that. And I'm just going to take my dark. They bleed through because they're an alcohol marker. I'm just going to take my dark blend and outline. And then I'm gonna take, there's a brush tip on one end and a bullet tip on the other. And I'm gonna take the brush tip and I'm just gonna make this as if there was a shadow on that one side. Then I'm gonna bring in my light Stampin' Blend and I want the brush tip. And as this dries, it, they will blend in together and give a really nice, realistic look. The other thing about the blends is that you don't want to get super close to your edges because they will like kind of bleed a little bit into 
the empty areas. Okay, and then as that dries, that will um, look darker and look really natural. It'll look nice. Okay, and I'm gonna color this here a little bit too. And I need to go up here. Okay, so that's done. Now the rest of this, I'm gonna color in with sponging and I'm gonna show you the, our, our stampin', our blending brushes and these are, I think three for maybe $12. And I have one to use for all greens, all purples, all oranges, all, you get the gist of it, whatever the color family is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this whole thing in soft succulent. I'm just gonna lightly um, brush that on. So you just take your brush on your pad and you wanna start off to the side and get a little bit of that initial strong color off and I don't care if this gets outside the lines a little bit it'll be fine it's just going to have a kind of an impressionistic watercolor look and you can see we're getting a nice soft green On there and I'm going to take the end and try and get color on the end of this and just go down these little spiky tails here from the plant okay so we've got that next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with old olive which is a little bit darker and I'm gonna do some of these centers with the old olive. And because I'm in it, it's gonna be more um, directed in a small area, I'm just putting it on the very end here. And I'm gonna go in and just do the center. See how that makes it, it darkens it up nicely. We want a little bit here and maybe there. Now we need a little bit of um, a lavender touch. And so I'm gonna bring in my blending brush that has purples and lavenders on it. And you, what's nice about these is you can rinse them off in water um, and they will dry nicely and you can reuse them. They will be stained, but, and I just want a little bit of purple right here. Just little touches of it. I'll go up there, here. A little bit here. Some there. Maybe a little bit there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to sponge the rest of this outside area. And I'm using Pool Party. I didn't write down what color I had used on my original card, so I'm guessing, but I think it was pool party. Let's see if it looks like it. Yep. And I'm just gonna come in like this. And go all the way around my edges.
I have a bird feeder outside this window and my husband said that there's been a skunk visiting. <laughs> I have seen a skunk up behind our house here. And I hope I don't run into him when I'm outside. But I guess he was out there really early in the morning, enjoying some seed that had fallen on the ground. So you wanna start off on your scrap paper and come in like this. And we just want a light halo of color of this um, pool party color around the edges of the card. And we're almost done. See this here? I, I should have gone a little lighter. I should have started off and I probably didn't start off the card there. But that that's what happens. if you don't start off your cardstock and you're just blending in a circular motion. Okay, so I, I really like that. I'm gonna go a little bit darker here. And on this edge. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp our sentiment here, and it says, kind people are my kind of people, and I want that down in this corner. And again, this is Black Memento, and this is a flat edge, so I'm going to line that up parallel to the um, edge of my card stack. And hopefully it will be straight. Okay. Kind people are my kind of people. And now I'm gonna go ahead and before I mount that on, I've got one more thing I wanna stamp and that is on the inside uh, piece, the sentiment for the inside. So I've got the front done, and on this one, I'm just gonna stamp one of these little flowers. I'm gonna stamp it right here. And then I've got a little mask I made for that, so I can stamp another flower right next to it. And when you do mask on, you wanna use post-it paper, post-it note paper or something really thin. And um, what you wanna do is stamp where it's sticky on the post-it from the post-it still and it will help hold it down. So that's covered. I'm gonna go up here, stamp off that a little bit. And then I think right here, let's see how this looks. Yeah, that looks nice. And I'm gonna bring in my blending brush again. And I'm gonna just use some of the green that's on it and just go around in the corner. And then I'm gonna take and dab a little bit of lavender. See if we got any more on here. I think I need to get a little more. Okay. All right, so that's gonna go on the inside of my card. Now let's put the card together. 
I'm gonna close some of these up so I don't get my fingers in them. So I'll go ahead and get my tape runner and my silicone mat. I have to pick rhubarb today. I've got rhubarb that is um, getting old and I need to pick it. I usually freeze it, but if anyone has a good rhubarb recipe, I would be interested in it. Mom, my mom makes a really delicious honey lemon rhubarb pie. She's like the pie queen in our family. Okay. So there is the inside. Now for the outside, I have a layer of white cardstock. And what did I do with it? Um, it's five and three-eighths by four and an eighth. I'm just going to cut one quick because I misplaced it. Five and three-eighths by four and an eighth. Because our artistic piece that we did for the front is five and a quarter by four, so we want this piece a little bit bigger. You could even use a different color, like lavender would be really pretty, actually. Stand up to see what where I am placing this. And that is crooked. Okay, let's see if this looks okay. Yep, that'll work. Or the pool party would be really pretty. And this is where the blends bled through on the, on the back. Okay, in the world of stamping up, I don't know if you have had a chance to look at the clearance items. Because there are some great deals in there. I printed off a couple, actually. I'll show you, okay, so that's done. That turned out nice. So that one is done. I wanna show you really quick. If you haven't had a chance to visit the clearance rack, um, there's a lot of things in there that are up to 50% off, including, here's some of those things. These beautiful note cards and envelopes, they're only $5, they were $10, and these are really heavy. They're really beautiful. Um, some of this acetate, Golden Garden Designer Specialty Acetate Paper, that's just beautiful, was $9. It's on sale for $4.50. Some of the Love You Always foil sheets in these gorgeous colors, Five dollars. They were ten dollars, and this is a really neat thing. This is a Dandy Garden Memories and More pack, and I believe that's five dollars also. But you can use it for scrapbooking or to make cards. But if you get a chance, look in the retiring section because there are some great, um, beautiful things on sale in there. And I'm dropping ribbon all over the floor. It's a good thing I don't have a cat or a dog. The other thing that's going on now that ends Monday 
is the special if you spend um, connect craft and collect um, $25 if you have a party or if you spend um, $250 you get an additional $25 in stamp and rewards and usually it's only $25 so you will get $50 free in product on top of what else you've um, earned and last of all well we'll talk about that in a little bit the, the new kits collection okay the next card I'm gonna do is this one right here and I want to show you how to make this beautiful wreath um, this just op it says thanks on the front and that die is in the Simply Succulent set. So we're gonna start with a piece of Petal Pink cardstock. And this is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. That is gonna be our card base. And I forgot to bring my phone folder over. We'll just try doing that okay um <clears throat> and then i have a piece of cardstock that is five and a quarter by four i believe nope this is five and three eighths by four and an eighth i have a piece of sweet symmetry designer series paper this is really pretty paper and this is i think this is one and a half um look in my notes here one and three quarter nope um one and a quarter by five and a half that's what this is and then our artistic piece here is um four and three quarters by four and an eighth and I'm using basic white. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp the wreath and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I have dyed or punched out a circle. The circle is, I think this is one and three quarter inch size circle. And I'm gonna center it on my um, piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna add a glue dot to the back of that to help hold that. I'm going to take some of the stick off the glue dot so that when I pull it up, it doesn't um, leave a mark on my uh, card stack. All right, so I'm just going to put this on here and center it. And I think that looks pretty well. Just got to go this way more. Okay. Nope, it's not centered. It's got to go over more. And there goes my glue dot. Okay, that looks about right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my stamp up all the, when I'm going all the way around this circle to stamp that wreath in place. And again, I'm going to bring in that little mask I had. Actually, I had two of them. Um, so, and you'll see on this stamp, there's kind of a flat edge. And that's the edge I want around the edge of the circle, button up against the edge of the circle. And you'll see, even though I'm putting the edge against the circle, it the flower is going to be like an eighth of an inch away from that. I'm going to go all the way around and stamp. I'm using black me memento ink. And you will see I'm not I'm not needing to use a mask at this point because I'm stamping just a little bit away away from the previous uh, bloom. 
Now this one, okay, so this one's gonna be kind of close. So I'm gonna take my mask and put over that. And actually, I may, I'll put another one on this one. I think that goes right there like that. And then I'm gonna stamp. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna fill in these little gaps here. I'm gonna move this one over. Let's see. Need to line this up right. I'm gonna stamp in between there. I'm gonna fill in this little gap. So I'm gonna move this one. I still need that one on there. I'm gonna move this one to that flower or bloom. I'm gonna move this one. See how it fills it in nicely? Over to this one. Like this. I'm gonna move this one over to here. And the circle is just to use as a guide. And one more area. There. Okay, let's see what that looks like. We'll take our mask off here. Looks pretty good. And we'll take our circle off. So we have this beautiful, nice wreath. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring in those Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna bring in my green one that I used. And I need my scrap paper again. I'm going to lay this on here. I'm going to get some, any dark green off because what I'm going to sponge it with, or yeah, sponge it with is the soft sea foam, which is like our lightest green color. And I'm just going to lightly go. around the edges or on the blooms here with a soft sea foam. Today I have weeding to do. I have a flower bed that I've had soil sitting there. I need to spread that out and I thought at first we were supposed to get rain but it looks kind of cloudy now got something on the edge there okay so I've got that sponge I'll wipe this off now I'm going to bring in my petal pink stamp and blends and I'm just going to highlight some of the edges with this dark. I'm just very lightly gonna go like this on some of these dark edges. You can see where the artist has added like a little line and like the centers, I'm gonna make dark. like that. And I'm gonna go all the way around this like that. It 
if you'd like to sign up for my e my newsletter, I will have a link below this um, video to do that, and then you'll be notified um, about any of events that are going on, like workshops. Um, we have a Monday night mystery stamping that's a lot of fun. And I usually email out the directions for what you need to participate, like how the size of your card stock, that kind of information. And usually I email that out on Saturday, sometimes Sunday, if I don't have time, but I don't like to do it on Sunday. Sunday is the Lord's Day, so I'd like to get that done. But sometimes I don't. <laughs> All right, so I'm still going around with the petal pink like this. I'm filling in the centers and mainly doing where the lines are in these blooms with this. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my light petal pink and I'm just gonna fill in um, random flowers, blooms, petals, whatever they are. I'm gonna draw in some of that dark pink. Okay, I think he needs a little color wreath there. So we have our wreath done, basically, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sponge the petal pink color onto this um, top layer of cardstock. And I know I brought it, oh, here it is. I knew I brought it over, but I wasn't seeing it. So this whole weekend, if you comment and share this post, then I will have a drawing to win that Berry Blossoms or Berry Blessing stamp set. It's new. I've never used it. It's retired. It was out during celebration and it, this is berry season. So it's a great time of year to use it. it. has some really pretty sentiments with beautiful font. Tuesday night is our team time and we're gonna be doing some cards together. So that will be fun. I really love using these brushes because you'll have light and dark areas on your paper, on your card stack and kind of has an ombre look to it. All right, so that's done. And I have a little thanks in the middle and I'm gonna die cut that using um, one of the little tag dies. And I stamped that in mint macaron. And this is a little die. They're all stitched, which is nice. So I'm going to bring in my mini stamp and cut machine. Whoops. My heat tool fell and turned on. It's not good. <laughs> that would be a disaster. Okay, so we need the plates. I was like, what did I do with my plates? Okay, there's, so we're using one, a two, and then we're gonna put our uh, little 
sentiment in our tag. You can use a post-it note to hold it in place if you want to. Sometimes I do, but I think that'll be okay. And we'll crank it through. Okay. And we'll bring our center back in, and I think I'll put some dimensionals on this and pop it up a little bit. center this now let's put our layers together and then we'll add our bow um, so I'm bringing back in my petal pink cardstock and I've got a layer of the white I'm going to add on With this seal plus, if you, when you're at the end of your row, if you go like this, usually it will have the tape right back down there for you to use in your next row. If you're going along and you can't get it to start, you can back up on some of what you've already done or you can run it on the silicone craft sheet, which I've got right here. Okay, so we've got that on there. We're going to add our middle piece. Uh, this is the Seal Plus, which is my favorite to use. And I also like the multi-purpose liquid glue, depending on what I'm doing. All right, so this is going to go straight across all the layers like that. And then I'm going to pop this piece up with dimensionals. Um, I could use a foam sheet. I don't have any cut, but they're really nice because you don't have to take the time to lay out all the little dimensionals. We'll add a couple here, 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 and here. I can't believe school is almost over. My older granddaughters are done this week. I think they go Monday and Tuesday. And the other kids, I think, go this week and maybe the beginning of next week, and then they're done. All right, so. Um, that looks about right. I hope it is. I've got a, something there I'll have to correct. All right, so our front is done except for the bow. I'm going to grab the ribbon, and this is the new, one of the new in colors. This is the soft succulent. I love this ribbon. It's so easy to work with. Easy to work with. And that's what you want. We'll make some loops here. Uh, 
and I'm going to bring in my snips. And then that is going to go there. We need a glue dot. Put him right up there. Some little gems might be pretty too. And then I would do the inside. I didn't, oh, I do have a piece cut here. So I'm going to save that and do that later. I'm going to move on to the next card to save time. So you could use, do the little flowers in here. That's probably what I would do. Um, but that will be for another time. Oh, I wanted to come back to the kids collection. Um, Stampin' Up! Is, does not show the kits in the catalog. They were having a problem with them being available. So the kids collection, when you go to the online store, there will be a subject for kits that you would search on. But there's some really beautiful kit collections. Um, I wanted to just make you aware of it, that it's they aren't in the catalog and why they're not in the catalog. And, but they there's just some beautiful ones I just ordered and I think I'll do, some night I'll do a Facebook Live about them. Okay, the next card we're gonna do is probably my favorite. And this one actually, um, we're gonna color on the back side of the new Shimmery in Color Vellum. Can you see the shimmer on this? Isn't that pretty? And I've used a die from the contoured scallop dies to die cut the front. So um, we have this little, uh, this is also the same vellum and I'm gonna show you how I did that. So we'll bring in the parts and pieces. This is the last card I'm gonna show today. So if you, Place an order of $40 or more in my online store. There will be a PD, free PDF tutorial I will send you for six different cards, including these three here that we did not get to today. Um, and that will be free. And you wanna use this host code right here when you place your order. You use that host code and I will send you the PDF tutorial for six free cards. And, or six, I'm sorry the tutorial, free tutorial for six cards. And then this is the Berry Blessing stamp set that I'm giving away today if you share uh, this weekend and comment on the post. And this is brand new. And I love this font in that set. Okay, so let's get going on this card. And we have a piece of card stock that is five and a half by eight and a half. And I am going to use the scalloped contour, one of the scalloped contour dies, this one right here. Aren't these dies really pretty? They're beautiful. They're all, they all have that scalloped edge. And I am going to take it over to my big shot and I'm gonna line it up at the one inch and I'm gonna um, cut that off. So you wanna line it up. You don't wanna cut it this way because it'll cut both ends, which would be not good. So I'm gonna line it up over here. I'll be right back.
so that's done. And that looks like this now. I'm going to, let's do the coloring in the embossing and stamping. So I have thanks embossed down here on the bottom. And I'm gonna bring in my stamp buddy, stamp embossing buddy. And what did I do with Mr. Stampin' Emboss buddy? Here he is. And we don't sell this right now, but I've kept my old one to use. It just keeps the static and um, helps keep loose uh, pieces of the embossing powder in the right place. So I'm bringing in my Versamark ink, and I'm gonna stamp thanks. I'm gonna ink up the, the thanks stamp. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, that looks good and inky. Now I'm gonna bring in my coffee filter. I'll also put the host code for this workshop in the comments below too. Coffee filter and white embossing powder. Okay, now I can't find the white embossing powder. Oh, here it is. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this. If you've never embossed, you put your powder over that. I'll flick some of that off there. So that looks pretty good. I don't have any stray stragglers there. I'm gonna bring in my heat tool and I'm just gonna heat this up. And you'll see it melt and change. White on black is always pretty. Okay, so that's done. All right, so we've got that done. Now let's do the uh, details on the vellum. So I'm gonna use a piece of vellum, and I've already done this, and I have stamped on the wrong side on this one. You can stamp on the front, but if you stamp on the wrong side, um, it, I like the look of it being not as dark, the, the black lines from the stamp on the front. So you can see that, the shimmer. Um, I don't know if you can see the shimmer, I hope you can, but this is the shimmery side. So now I'm gonna bring in my Polished Pink Stampin' Blends. And I found that this will not leak through the vellum which was interesting. And I'm just gonna start with a light blend and I'm gonna go over this whole thing with the light pink blends, the brush tip, because it'll go faster. Just like this. And then I'm gonna come back in with uh, dark and just highlight like the centers of the flowers with the dark and some of the tips. And what will happen is it will show through on the other side. It's more muted, it's, it's really pretty.
This would be pretty, probably too, with uh, if you did do like the soft sea foam or mint macaron, and then highlighted it too with a uh, Highland Heather, uh, a purple shade or a lavender shade. Okay, so there's the light. And now I'm gonna bring in the dark and I'm just gonna Well, maybe I'll do some blossoms all dark. I'm just going to do a few of these little tiny blossoms in some of the dark. Like maybe this side of it for shadow. I'm going to do these centers. Go around some of these bigger leaves like this. Okay, so I'm also going to do the center of this one. Go around these edges. And just do some of the centers of these. There. I could do color in some of these more, but I think the focal point, the main focal point in this is the large blossom and the little trailing growth at the bottom of it. And I see some people are using this image like kind of sideways, which you could, but to me it just looked more natural, kind of like this. I'm just going to go under those. Okay, we'll call that good. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. Oh, we missed, totally missed this one, and that needs a little bit. All right, so if we turn it around... Isn't that beautiful? I hope you can see the sparkle. It's just muted and sparkled. So I'm gonna take this over and I'm gonna die cut this shape out and I will be right back. So you could use it, you could put it on like this, but I really like this muted look here. Um, so let's get our um, cardstock back out, our black cardstock. I'm gonna bring this in and 
Now, if I put this on here like this, it's just too dark. So I did die cut out a piece of Whisper White to put this on. And I'm gonna put it on like this. And then that um, helps you see the beautiful flowers better. So I'm gonna take my multi-purpose liquid glue and just put some little glue dots on the back of this. And it won't, there's enough going on on this vellum that it won't show. And just make it really, really sparse and tiny, your glue. Just gonna go like that. Just on the edges. I'm gonna lay this right on the white cardstock. I'm actually gonna pull it over just a little so the very edge of the white shows on this side here. All right, before we put that on, we're gonna put our plant pail on. And I've already stamped that to save time. And I want my pail about like this. This is gonna go like this. Let's see. So, I think I want the pail about here. I'm gonna glue that on. Let's see if this, yeah. And then I made a little covering of, this is the vellum. This is the Shimmer Vellum in the new 2021-2023 in colors, and this is the Freesia. I'm just gonna take and run glue at the top of this to hold it. And that gives that pale a really pretty color. And I'm gonna use dimensionals to pop this up. I'm hearing all kinds of big trucks here on the road. We'll put that down the middle, this here. Okay. And I'm gonna have to tack that down a little bit at the bottom. Yeah. Let's see, hopefully it won't show through that much. I'm gonna hold that a minute. So that says thanks. The next thing we're gonna do is add our strip this is one and a half by five and a half, right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use my liquid glue because I already have it out. And this is gonna line up right on the edge. There's not gonna be any space around it with the black showing. And then I'm gonna take my other piece of basic white, it's two and a half by five and a half, and that's gonna go right here. And if it overlaps your gingham, the gingham is from the Pansy Petals designer series paper. If it overlaps it a little bit, it's fine. It will look fine. You wanna go right up to the crease here. Move this over just a tad. Okay, and then the only other thing we need on this, so we need the little flower on the bottom edge. 
and I'm gonna, that's here, I'm gonna color the back of it. We'll go faster with the bullet, or the brush. This can be the little guy that fell off. And I need a little dark pink on that. We'll do dark in the center. We'll put a dimensional on it on the back. There. And we need our bow. And this is that same in color, new in color ribbon. It's open weave is the name of it, I believe. And this is the fresh freesia. Sorry, I dropped it on the floor, so I'm winding it up here. Then our card is done. Don't forget to comment and share, even if you watch it and it's not live. Comment and share this weekend. And you will be put in a drawing for the Barry Lessings retired stamp set that is brand new. And I will be posting on this page our mystery stamping for Monday night. The measurements that you will need for that. If you would like to join us, we would love to have you. Oh, you know what? I used the uh, soft succulent on the other card, but this will be pretty too. And I think I need to trim this a little bit. Okay, so here's the cards we did today. We've got this one. We've got this one. And where is the other one? Here's the other one. So I hope you have enjoyed this. And um, I will be doing another online workshop shop next month, and I'll announce the date in advance. So... Hope you have a great day. Take care.